Now, he was best known for playing the monstrous Italian-American mob boss with the tortured psyche, Tony Soprano. He died on his way to Sicily, where he was due to host a masterclass in acting. Not the mafiosa, though he could probably have done that too. Tributes have been paid to the actor James Gandolfini, who has died at the age of 51 after suffering an apparent heart attack. Our Washington correspondent, Matt Fry, reports. That music, one of the ugliest roads in America, in New Jersey, one of its least appealing states, it all comes flooding back. And at the center of this 86 episode drama, the man at the end of the cigar. Tony Soprano, a mobster like no other, not just played by Jim Gandolfini, embodied by him, girth and grit. We got this platonic thing going. We have... Gandolfini was a son of New Jersey, of Italian-American stock, born into poverty. His mother was a dinner lady, his father a bricklayer, and Jim himself a nightclub bouncer before he discovered acting, in part to help him with anger management. Same thing, it was very hurtful. Tony, relax, it's not a big deal. It's undermining, and it's the kind of stuff I'm teaching my kids not to do. So I don't want to hear it With all that pasta, plonk and family politics, the Gandolfinis could have been the Sopranos, up to a point. What do you got to say now? Killing a waiter for complaining about the tip. An example of soprano hey. anger management is a work in progress. Cloaking the grotesque and the mundane, that was part of his genius, as was the sensitive soul bubbling beneath a volcanic personality. Jesus Christ almighty, come on, will ya? Never before had a TV mobster gone to a shrink, let alone fallen in love with her. Well, I want you. And not just for the smart things you say. I, I, I want... I want your skin. There was genius in those sad eyes, David Chase, the creator of The Sopranos, said today. Genius and Emmys, three of them. When he died, he was on his way to a film festival in Sicily to give a master class in acting. This guy was so full of life. He was a very robust man, very talented and friendly, and just a guy you want to put your arm around and hug him like he's a big, big bear. I mean, it's going to affect a lot of people's lives, I'm sure. After The Sopranos, Jim Gandolfini went on to do a series on post-traumatic stress, and he became a star of the big screen, here in Killing Me Softly with Brad Pitt. I don't take orders from you. 7.30, get some sleep. But the role that defined him and redefined scripted drama on American cable television was Tony Soprano. After eight years, the final episode had the faithful guessing on the Sopranos tour outside the real Bada Bing nightclub. Raise your hand if you think Tony gets whacked. Okay. What if the whole thing has been a dream or is delusion? <laughs> and this was it, watched by 12 million. A family reunion in a diner. Mom, dad, and teenage kids. So average, up to a point. Don't stop. But it did, just like that. The very sudden and unsatisfactory ending to The Sopranos left millions of fans aghast, lost for words. One of them wrote that the fading to black was in fact Tony Soprano's final view of life just after he was whacked by one of his enemies. What we can say is that this is a case of death imitating art. Jim Gandolfini, one of the great actors, fell by a mundane heart attack at the age of 51. It is a real but also tragic ending to The Sopranos that no one would have scripted. Don't stop. Who died?